Um, <clears throat> I just want to be able to touch some bases tonight, and uh, I want to welcome those who are watching by Facebook. God bless you tonight. And uh, if you don't see anybody here, pray for them. They should be here. If you don't see them here tonight, pray for them. They should be here. Except for Vicky because she's sick. Let's pray for her because she had an operation on her mouth today, surgery. And she's still recovering, yeah. Uh, so, Father, we just pray for her, Lord. We just pray, God, that you just touch her and uh, be with her tonight, Father. We love Vicki and her family, and we thank you, Lord. And we pray, God, for your hand of healing to be upon her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And, Lord, I pray that the pain would subside, Father, and that she'd heal quickly. And we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Jeanette, too. We just mentioned her in prayer that she's recovering and she's getting better. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Tonight I want to talk to you about Mystery Babylon. And he's going to put my slide up there. Mystery Babylon, World Empire, Final Destination. And you see a lot of symbols in, up there, Christian symbols, uh, Jewish symbols, the um, uh, Muslim Catholic, the um, Masons, the Illuminati, and the other one is, I don't know what the other one is, <laughs> but uh, Mystery Babylon, because that's going to be one of the things that is really going to be uh, culminating in the last days, that's going to be one of the things that is also formulating in the last days, and so I want to touch about that. If you have your Bibles I want you to turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 1. I'm going to read that first. We're talking about Mystery Babylon. And I know there's some people that can just keep babbling on, too. They just babble on and on and on, you know. But anyway, praise the Lord. Is someone getting my water for me? Oh, there she is. Oop, there she goes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. Can we read that in the HCB, uh, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P version? I keep, I don't get those letters uh, right. H, C, S, B. Okay. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and laid siege to it. How many know that history repeats itself? History has a tendency to repeat itself. And as you look in the, the book of Revelation, you're going to find Babylon. In fact, you find the Babylon almost in every book in the Bible. Somewhere, some fashion, some, some form, it's in there. <clears throat> In the third year reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and Judah is the house of praise. That's what Judah means. It's a house of praise. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the enemy of Israel, came to Jerusalem, laid siege to it. Now, if we are to compare the same kind of attitude today in the church. We see the Babylonian spirit or the spirit of Antichrist taking siege, attacking the church. And it seems like, and it seems like, the enemy is winning. But we may think and say, well, it's because the church is not making a stand. Well, let's read verse 2 first. 
Can you fix that? Um, thank you. It says the Lord handed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, over to him, along with some of the vessels from the house of God. Nebuchadnezzar carried them to the land of Babylon, to the house of his God, and put the vessels in the treasury of his God. The Lord handed the king of Judah over to Nebuchadnezzar. I believe as we're approaching the last days, and we always say we're in the last days and Jesus is coming, that that mystery of Babylon, if you will, that Revelation talks about, it's a world system. It is a system that is coming into uh, being and it's coming and infiltrating into the church but I believe that God is allowing it to bring correction to the church the Bible says that judgment must begin in the house of God and because judgment will begin in the house of God I believe that's why we're seeing some of the things the atrocities that are happening in the church and how the enemy is getting a foothold over Christians. I see that... I'm going to turn my phone off because I just heard it click. I see that the enemy is gaining ground in our nation. I don't know if you read about this, but... Uh, New York, uh, Governor Cuomo just passed a bill that a baby can be aborted even while it's being born. And I wrote a little article on Facebook about it, a little something on Facebook about it. And I said this, the God of Moloch is still being served today. Because how they served the God of Molech was they would offer their children up in sacrifice. And that's exactly what's happening today. The God of Molech is being worshipped today, and these people don't even know it. Governor Cuomo, or whatever his name is in New York, doesn't even know that he's offering up these children, or maybe he does know. But I know one thing. There's coming a day... When Governor Cuomo and all of those who have had their hand in the murder of all these babies whose blood is crying out to God for vengeance is going to receive what they deserve on the day of judgment. They may get away with it here on earth, but they're not going to get away with it in heaven. I'll tell you that right now. And that spirit of Babylon, that spirit of of uh, sieging and overtaking is happening in our country. It's happening in our churches. You can see it happening through carnality, humanistic philosophies and ideologies that are overtaking pastors and trying to fill their churches. They're so interested in filling their churches that they're compromising the very gospel, the very word of God. And because they're doing that, people will come in. And the devil will bring them in because he wants to make sure that that church doesn't know how to fight the battles against him. Now, I believe that God has allowed it like he has allowed this. Look at verse, uh, let's look at verse 2 again. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shina to the house of his God. Nebuchadnezzar carried them to the land of Babylon to the house of his God. So we see what's happening is, is they're taking the things of God and mixing it with paganism. Mixing it with false gods. And so what's happening? People are beginning to worship 
And if you've noticed, even the worship has changed. When is the last time, except for us, because I know we do it, but and maybe a remnant of others, but when's the last time you heard songs about the blood? When's the last time you heard the old hymns that would glorify God and worship God? Some of the new songs do, but uh, most of them are about me and how I am and, and I'm a friend of God and, and I'm this and I'm that and I'm a child of the king and I'm, I'm, I'm all this stuff. And then you see the worldliness coming into the worship time. You see how uh, they have the smoke and the lights and all of those uh, worldly attractions incorporated into worship. But God says, you cannot worship me that way. You must worship me in spirit and in truth. You can't be using the outside things to worship me. That doesn't bring glory to me. That's like when they built the house of God. The, the stones could not be made by human hands. They had to be hewn stones. Man could not touch it because man would contaminate it. And that's what's happened in the churches today. That Babylon spirit of sieging the very worship. You come to church, you see people sitting in their chairs, yawning, looking at their nails, doing everything but worship God. And the enemy's in that. He doesn't want you to worship God. He doesn't want you to lift your hands. He doesn't want you to stand in God's presence. He doesn't want you to honor the word of God. And so he'll do everything he can in the church to get you into that mode of philosophy of the Babylonian spirit. He took the things of God and he brought it into the house of his God and put the vessels in the treasury to his God. That's the ultimate destination of the enemy infiltrating the church. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 to 2, it tells us Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls that came, came and spoke with me Come, I will show you the judgment of the notorious prostitute who sits on many waters. Verse 2. The kings of the earth committed sexual immorality with her. and Those who live on the earth became drunk on the wine of her sexual immorality. What is that? Sexual immorality is symbolic of unfaithfulness. How many in the church today are unfaithful? giving in to that spirit. Unfaithfulness. Can't come to church anymore. Get every, every excuse in the world. Hello? Can't come to Bible study anymore. Get every excuse in the world. Can't come to Monday night prayer. Get every excuse in the world. You're giving in to that Babylonian spirit. I'm telling you, people don't like this kind of preaching, but this is what's needed to get the church back in its place. Thank you, honey. That Babylonian spirit of compromise, allowing the enemy to come in. They can't come to church, but they can go everywhere else. It's sad. It's sad. They'll drive miles and miles and miles, but they can't come to church. 
Come on, somebody. Allowing the enemy to come in. Verse 2. With the kings they have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made them drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman. Now, these are symbolic, of course. It's not talking about a literal woman. He says, I saw a woman. Can I tell you that I believe, me, I believe, that this woman has the same characteristics as Jezebel. Oh, we see that Jezebel spirit. That Jezebel spirit is in the church. Hello. Hello. Well, God, you know I can't do this. Well, God, you know I can't do that. Manipulating God. God said, what do you mean you can? No, God says, no, it's not that you can't. You won't. Come on, somebody. That spirit of Jezebel. Usurping authority. That mystery Babylon spirit. Usurping the authority of God's word. God's word says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. That spirit of Jezebel, that usurping of, a, of, the, of a authority, usurps over God's word, and the person says, well, I, I, that's okay, I don't have to. It's like the Egyptians, it's like the, uh, the Israelites when they came out of Egypt and they waited upon Moses to bring the revelation of God and of his word. And while they were waiting, they became impatient. Can I tell you, that's what's happened to the church because we're waiting on the Lord's return and because he's not coming when we think he should come, we get impatient. And then they begin to cry out, who, to who? The priest, Aaron. Make us a God that we can worship. In other words, make us a God where there's no commitment, where we can do as we please. We can still live in sensuality. We can still make our own choices, but one that's not going to put any, any kind of uh, restriction on us. And can I tell you, that's what the church is doing today. They have made and fashioned a God after their own likeness, after their own image. Do you see that spirit of Babylon working co covertly behind the scenes? It's spreading and spreading. You've got to be aware. You've got to have discernment to discern that spirit. It's so sneaky, so sly. That he comes in with all justification. But no. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. I saw a woman sitting upon scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. We'll get into all of that in a moment. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of of harlots 
and abominations of the earth. Babylon is located just south in Iraq of one of the major cities. I forgot which one it was, the major city that it was near. I saw the woman drunk with blood of the saints. When this begins to take place, there is going to be martyrdom. Can I tell you today, today, in the United States, everyone saw that boy with the MAGA hat on, the Catholic boy, and how the news crucified that kid, and it was false. Their narrative was false against him. Did they come out and apologize? No. They came up with another excuse. More and more morality that Christians believe in are being slowly done away with. Nancy Pelosi gave an ultimatum to Trump, President Trump. Says, we'll give you the wall you give us a total ban on guns. I don't know if you read that. Give us a total ban on guns, we'll give you the wall. So now the things that are hidden are now coming to the surface. They have a hidden agenda. That Jezebel. I'll say it right in the camera right now. Nancy Pelosi, you're a Jezebel. You are a wicked person. You are a person of manipulation, intimidation, and domination. And you are under the spirit of witchcraft. And unless you repent, your eternal damnation is set for you. Wonder how long that will be on Facebook. I saw the saints, uh, let me go back. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Great admiration. What authority and power that woman has. And the angel said unto me, Where dost thou marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Verse 8. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. That's Satan. And go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. So all of this system is coming into play. But do you see the mystery? Do you see the hidden? Do you see how the plots are against the church of Jesus Christ. Do you see, I'm talking about the plots against you, because you're the church, to influence you. Think about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Nine o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, this altar had people praying. Wednesdays, years ago, Wednesdays, the women would meet on Wednesdays and pray.
What's happened? Slowly, but surely, slowly, slowly, it started to erode and erode and erode and erode and erode, and now it's none. We're lucky if people get here at quarter of or ten of to pray. And then, well, I won't go there. And the main scripture I want to share tonight is verse 9. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. Now, I want to, I want to clarify something. That doesn't mean that it was seven mountains. If you look up the word mountains in the Hebrew, even Mount Zion or uh, Mount Moriah, where the, you know they call the Temple Mount. And they say, well, it, it can't be in the city of David. It's going to be on a mountain. Well, I looked it up in the Hebrew. The word in the Hebrew means hills. It can be in the hills. So, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. Now, understand... Revelation is talking about a future, but also the present. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Any idea who the woman is? On what the woman is? Any ideas? Someone, huh? church no the Vatican <laughs> no what you read ahead didn't you all right I'll tell you in a minute so we see this the mountains can mean hills and the woman and there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not, yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So we see that the, the heads, or the, there were seven kings, and one is, one is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. That's the Antichrist. Let's talk about a system here. But if you want to know, What's going to take place, you need to read the, the book of Revelation. And verse 12, And when the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, verse 13, shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, This, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So you know what the waters are. Right? They're people. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. God is sovereign. 
This is not taking God by surprise. God is sovereign. And it is He who is put in their hearts to fulfill His will. In other words, it's going to go the way that God said it's going to go. It's not going to go with the way that these kingdom theologists say, kingdom theology say it's going to go. That they're going to win the world to Jesus and then present it back to Him and then He's going to come. Not going to happen. God put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until. A very important word. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's words will be fulfilled. God's word shall be fulfilled. Hallelujah. I don't care what man says. I don't care what they think they know. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. It's going to happen like God said it's going to happen. I don't care what people say. God is going to have his way. And here's the meaning of the woman. Next verse. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. It's a city. What's in a city? Rulers? Laws? But what city? There's a great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. What city could that be that is on seven hills? Isn't that Rome? Doesn't Rome sit on seven hills? The system it's talking about. The system of the world. That's why God says in his word, love not the world, nor the things in the world, for if you do, the love of the Father is not in you. The system. The way the world does things. The way the world accomplishes things. Don't do it that way. Do it God's way. The woman is a city. Well, how do you know it's Rome? Because if you look at the image that Daniel, that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and Daniel saw the image, the head of gold. Remember that image? The two feet of clay. Two legs of iron, but two two feet of clay. Speaks of the split in the Roman Empire. The feet, the 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 legs of iron were were uh, with Rome. The clay is the revised Roman Empire that is coming. Could be through the European Union. I've been showing you about the Pope and how he's been involved with 
uh, evangelicals and getting no more Protestantism now. There's no more Protestantism. We're all Catholics now. That's the thing with Kenneth Copeland and a lot of the evangelical preachers, uh, James Robeson and his wife, and uh, James Arnott. I think his name is James Arnott, the Arnotts from the tor Toronto. All making a confederation and thinking that it's unity when it's ecumenicalism. It's not the true unity of the Bible. You cannot have unity without truth because he's a spirit of truth. You can only have unity when you have truth. I can't be in unity with somebody that's worshiping idols. The Bible says, what has light to do with darkness? We can't mix it together. But the world is trying to mix it together. This spirit of Babylon, this Babylon uh, world vision, one world government we talked about, all of this is under that same philosophy of the Babylonian empire. Remember the Tower of Babel? Started with Nimrod. They wanted to build a tower. What did God do? He stopped it. He confounded the languages. They were speaking a language. He confounded the languages. Because it wasn't the time for that yet. There's going to come a time when we we'll all speak the same language. The, to the Tower of Babel is found in Genesis 11. Babylon is a symbol of evil and defiance. We see that today. So prevalent in the church. We see defiance. If there's correction in the church, the person gets up and walks out and goes to another church. Rather than examining their heart to see if the things that are being said are true. There's defiance. I, I can even tell you from playing music when I say, let's all stand and raise our hands. Defiance. People will sit there. Defiant. I don't have to do that. I don't have to do what you say. And they become a hindrance to the spirit. Rather than just saying, okay, I'm going to stand in the presence of God and lift my hands to God. I'm not lifting it to the pastor. I'm not lifting it to the song leader. I'm lifting it up to God. But no defiance. I'm not going to do that. I can sit right here and I don't have to raise my hands. What are we trying to do? Are we trying to control you? Are we trying to manipulate you? No. We're trying to flow all together in, in unity where the Spirit of God can come and, and, and touch us and move and have His being in our midst. Sometimes you just feel, you know, let's, let's have that. Let's have that. Let's, let's, let's just wait on the Lord. Let's just... Minister on the Lord like Sunday, and then the Spirit of God moved, and people spoke in tongues, and, and then there was an interpretation, but then there was another one. My wife had it, but she didn't give it at the time she's supposed to, but she gave it at the end. But that doesn't happen anymore, rarely in churches. What happened to those days? Spirit of Babylon. Creeping into the church, undermining authority, Jezebel's spirit, usurping authority over the word. Well, I don't have to tithe anymore. Usurping authority over the word. 
Well, that's Old Testament. Then tear it out of your Bible if you don't believe the Old Testament. But I'll tell you, when God wrote in Timothy, all scriptures given by inspiration of God, there was no canonized New Testament at the time. It was the Old Testament. Mystery Babylon. In these cities are leaders, intelligent leaders, that are formulating their own ideology of what success is. The church has fallen for the same spirit where the church is no longer an organism, it's an organization. It's become a social gathering place with programs that have taken the place of the spiritual. Now, don't get me wrong, programs are okay as long as the programs don't become the way. As long as the programs don't take you away from what needs to be done. True. Have, have prime rib, lobster, and shrimp dinner. People will run. Tell them you're going to have a, a Holy Ghost all-night prayer meeting. Watch all the excuses. Can't be there. Can't, can't do this. Can't go there. Uh, this excuse, that excuse, this excuse. But oh, for the prime rib and the lobster and the, and the shrimp, oh, they can make way. They'll be there. If I said in a newspaper, the first hundred people that walk through our doors get a hundred dollar bill on Sunday morning, this place would be packed. People you haven't seen in church for years would be here. But that just shows you what's going on in church. The, these little churches around that are preaching out of sincerity and truth and preaching the truth of God's word and giving you God's word, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm telling you. Those that are preaching out of God's word and teaching you God's word, if there comes a time, I, I shouldn't say if, when there comes a time, we probably will be gone in the rapture, but maybe before that, there may come a time when you will not be able to carry your Bible anymore. You know why? This Bible, to many people, is not politically correct. It's an old, antiquated book. Get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. That's what they say. But I say, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the words of our Lord shall abide forever. Don't want this. Tell us a story. Tell us a joke. Let me tell you a joke. I feel sorry for the people that are hooked onto these preachers on television. I feel sorry for them. And all those little preachers out here that are preaching the truth, struggling, having, you know, having a struggle, fighting depression, fighting, you know, the things of ministry. But we're still here. We're still pressing through, still going on. And you see these ministries come in five years, and they're, they've already got hundreds and hundreds of people. You know how frustrating that is? You know how the devil hums on you? You know how, God, how the enemy will use other people? Well, look at your church. Your church isn't growing. Look at what is, there's only a few people there. Look at this church over here. Look at how big they are. So they equate success with bigness. They equate. It's all part of the Babylonian spirit.
How many followers did Jesus have in Gethsemane? None. They all forsook him. He says, if you want to be my disciple, you have to take up your cross. You have to deny yourself. You don't hear the messages about denial. All you have is books out now, your best life now. That's not my best life isn't here. My best life's to come. I'm only in the learning stages right now. I'm in the process stage right now. I'm only going through the process right now. But this is not my home. Yet people are making this their home. Think about it. What are we doing with all of our money? What are we doing? We're sitting up nest eggs. For what? We're going to have a bigger house, newer car, newer gadgets. And what about the gospel? Thank God for those who give. Thank God for those that have a giving heart. And I, I have my one prayer and hope, and I believe it is true, that the one thing that you have seen in Linda and I is that we're givers. We give. We give, of, we give up our privacy. Not just once, several, several times. For what? For his glory. My message tonight is beware of that Babylon spirit. That's, that, that's, that system. That worldly Jezebel system. Usurping authority over. Taking authority over you, the church. Beware of that spirit. It is after you 24-7. He will not let up. And he'll get you any way he can. People say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I, I'm tired. Well, my wife slept maybe three, four hours, maybe five hours per night for 20 years. And she's always sitting here. Why? Because she wants to. She wants to be in the house of the Lord. You think God doesn't honor that? He does. So please, don't tell me you're tired. That's right. If anyone's tired, this woman right here, it's 87. And I marvel, snow, rain, She's here. Huh? First one here Sunday, besides me. Eighty-seven. Walker. My Aunt Edith, too. But I think that uh, Grandma Claire's got her beat by many years, though. <laughs> she don't have to be here. Many times I know her son will tell her, Mom, I know you, you're having a little struggle. Stay home. No, I'm going. Right? I want to go. Well, it's kind of raining. I'm, I, I want to go. It's okay. 
if she happens to nod off. I just emphasize the word, praise the Lord. <laughs> Beware of the, the, can I tell you, there, God's got us. I, I, don't want, I, I don't want to preach my Sunday message. But get ready. Yes. Okay, okay. But get ready. That Babylonian spirit, that mystery Babylon spirit is at work. The spirit of lawlessness, the spirit of Antichrist is working in the world. It's coming against the church of Jesus Christ. Come on, people. People that are watching. Look at some, some places around the world. China right now, they're, they're coming against Christians it's like, like, a, like a tsunami. They're closing churches down. They're beating Christians and throwing them in prison. Your brothers and sisters. What's next? America? Our hands are already tied in many ways. So I want to encourage you tonight that God has a purpose. And I believe the Lord has allowed that to happen to his church to wake it up. You know, we're looking at the church, we're seeing the direction it's going in and some of the things that are happening in churches, and it's unbelievable. Think about this. Think about this. I'm going to mention this one more time. The naked cowboy at a woman's conference. Hillsong Church, New York City. Naked cowboy, and he was the youth pastor in his underwear playing a guitar, and he had nothing else on. At a woman's conference. And you're telling, you cannot tell me that spirit of Babylon, that Jezebel spirit, that evil spirit is not working in that church. They're calling it entertainment. And they got all the characters up there, SpongeBob, Sponge Pants, whatever his name is. I don't know what his name is. Square Pants, I don't know, whatever. Squan, uh, I don't know. I don't pay attention to those things. I don't know what those things are. I'm like, I'm like uh, Nelson. I don't know those things over there. <laughs> but beware. When you want to make a move spiritually, the enemy's right there. Oh, you can't do that. Don't do that. Things seem to get worse. Don't do it. I'm going to let Leisha come up here. No, come on. That's okay. Come on. Yeah, well, come up and share it so we can have it on the on the... On, uh, on record here. Come on up. Beautiful Facebook wants to see this beautiful lady come up here. And no, I just wanted to say, do you heard the story about Pence, right? He was criticized by Lady Gaga? I heard a little well, I know I was reading the article, and I just wanted to say this is the new church, the new definition of Christian. Um, she, I guess because his um, wife is going to teach in a Catholic school or something, and because the Catholic, you know, Faith believes in, you know, um, you know, heterosexuality. Don't, they don't they speak against uh, homosexuality and what the Bible teaches, and that's, you know, that we're followers of Christ. So, um, and anyway, so um, Lady Gaga criticized him, and she said, "I am more of a Christian than he is." She claims she's, "I'm a Christian." So I was just thinking about the new church and the new definition of Christian. So um, we're radical. We're haters. We're bigots and things like that because what we believe in the Bible but they just did away with that like you said creating a God in their own likeness and their own image their own definition so now we have a new definition of Christianity and Lady Gaga represents that <laughs> so, so that's why I wanted to say that also I'll just say this Lady Gaga is cool cool <laughs> she has no idea what a Christian is and uh, she doesn't speak on behalf of all true Christians um, and so she has no clue 
if she was a Christian, she would never dress the way she dresses and do the, th the demonic things that she does. So we'll leave it at that. But anyway, watch out for that spirit of Babylon, that mystery Babylon, that city. It's a, it's a system. It's a world system. It's, it's, that's why Jesus said, love not the world, not the things that are in the world. It's that system. Because God so loved the world, he wasn't talking about the system of the world. He was talking about the people. Okay? That God so loved the people in the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay? But the system of the world, the way the world is going, don't love that system. Because if you love that system, eventually you'll turn your back on God. Because if you love the system, the love of the Father is not in you. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit shed abroad in our hearts the love of God. We have the agape love inside of us. Don't lose that. Amen? Father, thank you for your truth tonight. Thank you for your word. God, I pray that you would be with us as we go our separate way. Father, help us, Lord. Give us discernment and conviction, Lord, of the things that we've allowed in our lives, that we've allowed in the church. And God, help us to stand in these last days and not give in to these demonic influences and spirits that are taking over many churches and many churches are falling by the wayside. You said in your word that would happen, that in the last days many shall fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and teachings of devils. And these teachings of devils, one of them is Lady Gaga, is teaching that she's a Christian and Pence isn't a Christian. God help us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for tonight. And we ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen.